studio today to look at the Atomic CLR full range flat response speaker cabinet. Uh, there's a couple different versions of these cabinets available. You can get them in a uh, wedge, which is what I've got sitting right here obviously, or in a cube style cabinet, so it's more like a square backline style cabinet. Um, you can also get them in a uh, passive version, so you could use your own power amp with it if you want. Uh, this one I have here is an active uh, 500 watt biamped version, so uh, it's got its own power amplification built in. So we're just going to deal with the powered wedge version here today for this review. So the goal with the Atomic CLR series caps was to produce an extremely accurate full range flat response monitor system uh, with the end user uh, in mind being the person that has a guitar modeling system. So let's say you've got like an Axefex or a Kemper or a Line 6 pod or even a head that you run into a load box and a speaker simulator and now you want to send that signal out through an uh, accurate monitoring system. And let's say you've tweaked your presets at home using studio monitors or headphones and they sound great to you. Now you need, you need to be able to take those sounds uh, to the rehearsal room or out on stage and at any volume level get an accurate representation of your sounds with no surprises. Well that's what these cabinets excel at. They're just fantastic for this purpose. Now uh, this is a really really hard thing to try and reproduce in a demo video so let's not call this a demo. I'm going to call this a review and a personal endorsement on my part because I think the cabinets do an outstanding job. Um, so what I tried to do at the beginning of the video is give you, give you a little bit of a flavor of what it's like to be in the room with the cabinet. And what I did was use this uh, TC30K Earthworks mic. It's a really, really flat response reference quality microphone. And I mic'd the cabinet from about three feet out and just played some guitar through it. And, uh, uh, you know, I actually think it ended up sounding pretty good, but to get the, uh, the, the real picture of what these sound like, you need to get in a room with them, um, preferably with your modeling rig and just hear them because they're really, really fantastic cabinet. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of the uh, really cool features that this cabinet has. Um, first off, it's got a really, really wide sweet spot. So that's fantastic because you can move to either side of the cabinet a few feet or back, forward, wherever you want to stand, and you basically hear the same sound. It's really kind of uncanny how wide the sweet spot is. You know, you get used to having to stand right on top of a monitor to really get the sound coming out of it, and not with these. So that's a really cool thing that they've been able to, to capture in this cabinet. Uh, so some of the other great things about it, um, you've got these feet on the side here, you'll notice, as well as this mount here for speaker stands. So what you can do is either have it set up like a traditional wedge, like this on the floor. You can move it onto its side like this, set it on the feet, and then set it up behind you and use it like a, uh, like a traditional backline type guitar cabinet. Or else you can set uh, the speaker up on a stand and use it free field like you would a PA speaker. Um, so what happens when you do these different positions is the sound of the cabinet changes a little bit. Well the guys at Atomic have compensated for this using DSP, so if we look at the back panel, you've got a three position preset switch. First position says FF, okay, that stands for free field, that's when you use it up on stands. Uh, the next position is tilt, that's if you're using the cabinet as a floor wedge. The next position is BL, that stands for backline, if you're using it like a guitar cabinet behind you. And uh, using DSP, that switch will just compensate with some EQ, and uh, it's pretty amazing. It actually, the cabinet sounds basically identical uh, as long as you've got the switch set in the right position, no matter how you position it. 
Okay, let's look at the back panel some more. So you've got two separate inputs, input one and two, each with a separate level control. Uh, you've got uh, XLR and quarter inch combo style connectors for each of those inputs and uh, they'll accept balance or unbalance signals, so really wide range of input options there. Um, here's why it's great having the two inputs. Here's a scenario for you. You could plug your modeling processor into input one and have your guitar signal there. Uh, on input two, let's say you're playing a gig where there's a monitor desk. Well, you could get a feed from the monitor desk, plug it into input two, and have your drums and vocals and things like that there with a separate level control. So now you've got independent control in your wedge of your guitar volume and the mix of the rest of the band. And that's a really cool thing. You don't have to rely on the monitor guy if you need a little more guitar in your wedge. Okay, so next up you've got the master volume control. Okay, that's just master overall level for the whole wedge. Um, then you've got a sub switch. If you turn on the sub switch, you're going to switch in a filter that filters everything below 120 hertz. So uh, if you're on a particularly rumbly or bassy stage, you can clean up the sound a lot by switching in that sub filter. Uh, last up, you've got the link connector. It's an XLR style jack, and what that is is it's just a feed through. So whatever's coming in input one, input two, or both, you can send out to say front of house or the monitors. So in my previous scenario I was mentioning where you'd have your modeling processor in input one and then a mix from the monitor desk coming into input two, obviously you'd only want to send input one out uh, to the monitors and to uh, front of house. So that's easy to do with the switch here, just either in position one, position two, or blended. All right, well, thanks for watching my video on the Atomic CLR series cabs. I wish there could be more music in it. Um, I think the only way to really experience these speakers, though, and how good they sound is to get in a room with them. Uh, you know, one of the things I did when I was initially testing it is run some songs out through it just from iTunes. And, uh, you know, listening to it just from music reproduction, I was just blown away with how good they sound. Basically, what goes in is what comes out. That's what I want to get across in this video. Um, you know, with the advent of modeling getting so good, guitar modeling processors and speaker simulation, and also the trend towards quieter stages and bringing less stuff to gigs, I think a lot of guitar players will find uh, a place for these in the rigs. So, so be sure and check them out. I think they're, they're just a great product. The Atomic CLR. See ya.